Hello, everyone, and welcome to Knights of the Pageless Library. We are a little podcast dedicated to reviewing audiobooks. I am Bo Knight, and with me, as always, is my brother, Ryan Knight. And today, we are taking a look at Monster Hunter Bloodlines, written by Larry Correa and narrated by Oliver Wyman, the eighth book in the Monster Hunter series. Oh, yeah, and this is, before I forget, this is Spooky Month. We made an audible change to do all horror books this month. Yeah, so for anybody who was hoping we were going to do the Hero's Guide to Saving Your Kingdom, uh, sorry, we will be getting to that, but we, uh, yeah, we decided to try to get more uh, more Halloween, you know, appropriate books for this month. So I mean, that book we... could have been scary, but we don't know. Yeah, we'll get to it. Don't worry. We, we will get, we will come back around to it, so, um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Monster Hunter Bloodlines, the newest in the Monster Hunter series. Um, and if anybody has listened to our channel at all, uh, knows that, you know, we have been around the block on the uh, Monster Hunter series. So we've been around the Larry Korea block for sure. Um, you know, so <clears throat> I'm sure if anybody's listened to us, they know, you know, what kind of Larry Korea's books are usually about and stuff like that. Um, and this book kind of falls in line with all the rest of those. So. Uh, and this book is hot off the press. It just was released uh, in August, yeah. so it's very new. Uh, we usually don't get, we usually don't review books even shortly after they come out. So this is a little bit new for us too. So I usually don't even listen to books like right when they come out. Yeah, it's very rare that we get to do that. Um, yeah, and uh, obviously, also if anybody knows us. Uh, knows that we have you know had oliver wyman on the show and spoken with him um so let's start off with that what did you think of oliver wyman's performance on this one i think he does a good job other than he changed earl's voice a little bit not as much as i thought because people complain about it a lot online not as much as i thought he was going to but he changed it a little bit yeah <clears throat> Very slightly, though. I think Frank's voice, too, just very slightly. I See, but I didn't I mean, hear that. I mean, let's be real, though. Like, what? Let's see. Monster Hunter International came out in 2009. So he's been doing these books for 12 years. And, you know, to be able to perfectly mimic a voice every single time to the, you know, exact same thing well, and siege came out in 2017 so it's been probably for three years since he did a monster hunter book right so i think i thought his performance was awesome on this one no, i really did I, I mean he knocks out of the park i honestly want to email him and tell him what a good job he did because yeah. i can do that yeah yeah that is true <laughs> um I, I mean he does great i mean he 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 adds so much life to any book that he does it's just sure it's it's a fact yeah i 100 percent agree and i thought he you know he just he takes the story you know if the story is a 10 you know he definitely takes it to 11 or even higher so yeah he adds a couple points uh so you know like i said the genre of this one is definitely like a eh, it's like a what we call it not really sci-fi fantasy, but um, kind of along those lines, I suppose. Yeah, I, yeah, it probably would lie under the sci-fi fantasy action horror genre. Yeah, yeah, we'll go ahead and slip the horror in there because, yeah, it's spooky month, so we definitely got to make it seem like it is I, definitely scary. <laughs> but I mean, like, it, there are monsters and people die. A lot. Yeah, people die a lot in this one, too. <laughs> especially yeah. this one yeah um so this book comes in right at 14 hours and 11 minutes um and i'll come back to this but that felt so short it did me. so and i'll like i said once we pass the spoiler wall i'll come back to why i really think about that but i 
don't think this book would was given enough room to breathe to be honest um there's only really i mean in reality there's only about two things that happen in this book compared to like monster hunter international that has a lot of beats that it goes through yeah okay just just for reference how long do you think monster hunter legion is don't look Le legion okay i'm not gonna look uh 21 hours and eh, 16 oh really okay okay just just Fair. for like a frame of reference because see i don't really agree with what you just said what, so what okay with which part room to read. i don't think so I think okay i, I kind of disagree with that okay elaborate well we can't yet <laughs> oh <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, okay, fair enough. So we will we'll continue with the uh, our kind of general details of the book, and then we will pass the spoiler wall. Um, so as per usual, we listen to this on Audible. So you well, can get it's only available on Audible now. Oh, that is All correct. That's what I'm seeing. Books are that way. Nice. Uh, yeah. So you could get this with your Audible trial, you know, uh, for free, or you could pay. Let me see. Uh, $25 is what it looked like. Looks like. That's probably a fair price. This book's pretty new. Uh, oh, and I also have to mention, um, I said this came out in August. It actually was just released. Uh, the audio, that was the hardcover. The audio version looks like it was just released September 7th. So, yeah, yeah like a month ago. So, cool. Huh? Let's see. What other general details? Okay, so what did you think on this one? Um, uh, easy to follow? Easy to listen to? Yeah, I mean, I finished it in two days. So Right, yeah, I remember. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you flew through it. But I think if this was somebody's first Monster Hunter book, I think there are a, a, a few things that kind of get glossed over that would be hard for you to pick up on if this was your first Monster Hunter book. Oh, absolutely. And I do not think, I mean, I think you'd be crazy to start an eight book long series on the eighth book. Yeah. What so, kind of psychopath does that? Yeah. Don't, don't do yourself a disservice. Uh, and without, though. don't even think about it. Just skip it. <laughs> you could probably skip guardian too. Oh, I, the ones that are written with other people don't count as monster hunter books. I said it. <laughs> not canon. Not my no, canon. They shouldn't be. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Not my can. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, but seriously, don't do yourself a disservice, though. Don't like start on this book. You know, if you are in, if if this even seems remotely like it's something that's interesting to you, please go back and listen to our early review of Monster Hunter International. Um, you could even go as far as listening to our uh degradation of the crown episode where we talk about pretty much this series as a whole so yes. uh definitely do that and then definitely email us about it let us know what you thought of of that um and then you know make your way to this uh last book you know don't start with this book though um so actually so i want you to go first what did you think about this book um so I, I really enjoyed this book because I thought that this book had a good amount of humor in it. Um, this one might be the funniest one. I, I definitely laughed out loud at several parts. Me too. So that is saying something. I mean, and it, it probably isn't just the storytelling. It's probably Oliver Wyman uh, has a big part of that, you know. But I did. I laughed out loud a lot at this. Now, the amount of humor in it, um, almost unbalanced how kind of serious the situation was supposed to be, in my opinion. Um, but overall, I did like this. I don't think that this is a full return to form for the series for me. However, it's much better than like Siege or Guardian or something like that. Yeah. I see. I think this is a return to form. Okay. Because I really enjoyed this one. 
Yeah. I mean, I did too. I, I enjoyed this one quite a bit. Um, I just felt like the reason I even say that, that I didn't feel like it was a full return to form is I felt like we opened even more doors than we closed with the story on this one. Um, and I think it's almost getting too ambitious in my opinion. Um, and I was disappointed by the fact that we didn't fully continue what was supposed to be happening with a SOG. This felt more like book 7.5 than 8. Which I me. kind of think it was. I think this is like a transitionary book. Okay. and Because that's to, what it to felt To me, like. what this kind of feels like as a book was like whatever's coming up next, there was, there was probably so much of it that this is like the spillover that he okay. couldn't quite fit in. And that could be. Because, I mean... Uh, realistically yeah this book feels more like a setup to what's going to happen next yeah i mean which, this is i wouldn't be surprised if the setup. next book is the final book that would make sense i mean yeah like it definitely felt more like a 7.5 to me though because it felt like a stepping stone to something much much bigger not not that the story wasn't great like it was pretty it was good it kept me engaged the whole time i was genuinely interested in everything that was happening um there were very few parts if any that i was like well, what is the point of this you know right this was this was very engaging and i did like it and i like to get back to you know our core group of characters that we get to see you know that's why i was disappointed in guardian because it was solely about one character and it wasn't an in an interesting way like nemesis and alpha were yeah and the character totally changed their personality exactly but uh, well, uh, well, i don't need to get into that right now um but, but i did I'll, really enjoy this one one thing sure. I, I liked about this one that i feel like larry korea probably took it feels like our criticism exactly it was like well siege didn't have enough action for you then let me turn the action up to 10. yeah it was it was a lot of action um and almost, it was very, very close for me to being a detriment to it. Because okay. at some points, I was like, we're getting very, like, there was character building, but it would be like 15 minutes here, and maybe 15 minutes here. And then it was like right back to the action, which, in his defense, the way the enemy worked in this one was, made sense, you know? Uh, which which I think might be one of the reasons I really liked this is because I liked the the big bad, let's say, sure. in this a lot. I did too. It was super interesting to me. Yeah. It gave me a lot of good like D and D ideas. I was gonna honest. say that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I really like that. Yes. Um, so for me, if you're a Monster Hunter fan, definitely listen to this. Yeah, for sure. Same but, same for me. If you like monster hunter like the series ones don't listen to it because you have no taste like the the um memoirs the is that what you mean? yeah oh, no yeah, and the, the, the side stories that's called like uh oh files yes files i'm sorry yeah i mean yeah we don't like to talk about those ones i i mean okay so I guess we probably should pass the spoiler wall before I ask about this because this obviously is going to be a spoiler. So uh, for anybody who's new here, we're going to go ahead and pass the spoiler wall. We're going to go ahead and talk about the entire story. Uh, we're going to spoil pretty much all of it. So if this sounds like something that's interesting to you, please go ahead and go listen to it. And then please come back and finish listening to what we have to say about it. And email us your thoughts. That would be great. Uh, K-O-T-P-L.pod at gmail.com. I don't yes. think we said it yet. We haven't. I definitely have not said it this episode. Um, okay, so what did you think though about how uh, what's his face from the the memoirs tied into this story? See, how they are like I, I actually merging them? Liked it because okay. it, it it felt like Larry Korea was like, yeah, I know those weren't very good, but it still kind of matters. Because, like, they, they have that scene, like, with his daughter, you know, and they're like, what, so what do you think about him? And Pitt's like, I think he's full of shit. Which, yeah. to me, was, like, Larry Korea being, like, basically all those stuff in those books was nonsense. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I thought, I was very, um, 
had mixed feelings about it. Um, but I mean, if you're going to treat the memoir stories as canon, it only makes sense that you have to tie it back in now. So I right. think this was a pretty good way to do it. I, I think for with like the bloody corpse that Larry Korea was left with, with, with those stories, I think he made a pretty good puppet out of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think it was a as elegant of a way as he could, yeah. you know, to put it back in. It definitely was. It kind of felt like putting a square peg in a round hole, to be honest. But yeah, I with think like a really big hammer. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think this was the best possible way he could have tied the story back together so that those of us who know the whole series because like honestly i did not treat the memoir stories as canon because well, no, because they're bad it well not only are they bad but it was a character it would be different if it was a character we had had mention of in the story i mean we've talked at length about this but if it had been another character from from the storyline that we already knew of and those stories were just spin-offs doing like their backstories that'd be fine that would have been perfectly fine but the fact that it was a new character that hadn't been mentioned before in any of the books and they were made out to be like the most badass of badasses ever i, I hated that <laughs> so but i feel like he kind of ad addressed that because like even the other hunters who read it were like yeah this dude's full of shit right yeah <laughs> i did I did like that, and I did think that that was very funny. <laughs> I thought it was funny too. Um, but yeah, sorry, that was that was just a side tangent of seeing what you thought about that. Um, so yeah, we can start from the beginning on this one, which what this one picks up right at the um, where they're about to make the exchange, right? Okay. Yeah, their management had given them a tip that somebody is making a deal, like on the black market that we learned about like not even the black market like the evil black market that somebody is exchanging a ward stone and so they're like they're cased in a joint so that they can bust first of all the cult that has the ward stone because they're all puff applicable and get the ward stone from whoever is going to take it yeah because they need a new one right because they use theirs to well no they're um, getting this one specifically for a song right because they used theirs though on the the dread overlord right yeah and so exactly. now now they need this one because they know this is supposedly the only way to destroy a sog well they actually don't know if it's going to work or not oh yeah i guess that's true that's just what they're going to try right yeah um so <clears throat> the uh as the drop is about to be made, so you got Monster Hunter International casing where the drop is supposed to happen, and then uh, Pitt spots Grant uh, working, working at the at taco, taco truck, truck yeah. <laughs> which I did find funny. Um, so he knows now that MCB is also there, and they clearly, you know, have had a tip about this too. And we get the supposed drop vehicle shows up, right, with from the uh, the reptars. No, that's not what they're called. I, that's from Rugrats. <laughs> that's a pretty good way to put it. <laughs> that's the only thing I could think about every time they said it. The reptoids. Oh, yes. Is that how they say it? Yeah, the snake yeah. people. That's all I think about, those reptar. <laughs> from Rugrats? Um, yeah, from Rugrats. <laughs> um, so the reptoids are the ones selling the wardstone, right? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and I then, guess we should mention too, only because I'm a super fan and I, I am a hyper nerd, that management was going to buy the ward for them, but he didn't have what they wanted. Right to pay for the ward, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because Pitt mentions he does. He must not have had enough baby souls or whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he gives Julie some sort of like weird potions in Guardian. Yeah. Um. And then we get the other, the receiving party, <laughs> the who buyer. is supposedly buying, uh, and it is our old friend Stricken. Dun, dun, dun. Him. Yeah. Uh, but before the handoff can be made, a gal on a motorcycle rolls up and steals the ward in a red backpack. 
uh, that's what they were going to exchange it in was a red backpack, and she steals the backpack with the ward in it. Well, she proceeds to like go in and whoop everybody's ass, like knocking people out of windows and shit. Yeah, uh, doing like all kinds of freaking yeah. flips and jumps, yeah. and and she's like this small petite gal, but she's like whipping these big ass dudes just like it's nothing. Um, and she proceeds to take off with the ward, uh, which makes it so that uh. Everybody obviously has to give chase between the MCB, uh, mostly Pitt and Well, the uh, MCB Trip, are right? there for Stricken. Oh, yeah, that's right, because uh, <laughs> Operation Kill Stricken. <laughs> yeah, Operation Kill Stricken. We don't, we don't know that yet, but that's what it's called. Yeah, which, which I love that. Hilarious. Yeah, that one made me laugh so out loud. Uh, yeah, same here. <laughs> There's another uh, point I'll bring up later that made me laugh pretty hard. <laughs> um. That's right. The MTV knew that Stricken was going to be there. They didn't necessarily know what was going to happen. Yeah, they don't. They don't actually know a lot about the black market stuff. Right. Um. But then mostly, right? Uh. Trip. Uh. Oh, that's right. Because Trip and Pitt, with their uh new guy as their driver, take off to. Name. I can't remember either. Um. But they take off to follow her, and she's on a motorcycle, and. It's also what Dragon Con where they are. Yeah. So it's super busy. Like traffic is just people super in bad. costume. Yeah. Like, in lots of cosplay. Right. And it's super busy. So Pitt and Trip have to get out of the van and give chase on foot. Skippy uh, is also following her with his new drone. Oh, that's right. Skippy and Milo have the drones. That's right. Um. And then uh. Well, as they she's also... running away, oh, never mind. You're probably gonna mention it. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. So, like, as she's running away, she they like lose sight of her, and she comes back into view wearing the red backpack, but her face is entirely different. Yeah. She looks like a whole different person. Well, they don't even necessarily know that it's her at that point because they're like, uh, she still has the backpack, and it's still a young woman, but she looks completely different. Right, they're just kind of guessing at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, they also see some snake cultists again, right? So they are under the assumption that the cultists are tracking her, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at uh, shortly into their chase, they end up getting in a fight with some of the cultists, thinking they're gonna save this gal, <laughs> but she just proceeds to like bail out and leave them to fight the the cultists, which is pretty funny. See, I didn't think they were going to save her. I thought they were trying to get a hold of the tracking that they had. Well, and that's exactly what they end up doing is they get a hold of the tracker. They get a hold of one of the guy's cell phones, which has like an app up that is has a little moving dot, you know, which is tracking where the backpack is. I, I like this little bit because they like, you know, they whip their ass in like the sky bridge thing. And there's like tons of people from the, the con that are there. And there's one guy dressed up as the Kool-Aid man. And they like whoop those guys ass. And the, and the, the Kool-Aid man's like, man, that was awesome. Yeah. Because <laughs> they think it's like a show. Right. They think it's all part of the show, which I did find very funny, too. Um, But the girl manages to escape. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. Is this the part where Pitt and Trip have to go into costume? Uh, yeah, because the cops are looking for them. Yeah, because they've obviously been uh, people have seen them like chasing her and obviously called the cops and turned in their descriptions. So they think the best way to hide among all these people is Pitt. <laughs> they run into this like a group of people dressed up like Sesame Street, and I thought this was hilarious that Pitt buys the Cookie Monster head, yeah. just the head. Because he wants the whole costume, and the guy's like, I'm not wearing anything under here. <laughs> yeah, he buys the and, cookie uh, monster head and Elmo's head for Trip. He, yeah, Trip ends up with Elmo's head. And I, I did love Oliver Wyman putting the voice on for it. It was pretty solid. Yeah, because he monster. like yeah, he like bumps into somebody and he's like, Be very clumsy. It's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> it's so it actually well sounds exactly like Cookie Monster too. Yeah. So well done. I that was another part I laughed like out loud. At. Yeah, me too. Um, <clears throat> so then they end up finding the backpack, right? Yeah, in like a women's restroom of a hotel. Yeah, but the backpack is just there, empty by itself. Flat is the way he puts yeah. it, and I like that. Yeah, nothing in it. Um, 
Uh, and then Pitt realizes in the bathroom they're in, there's just like a little tiny window up above that he thinks nobody clearly could have escaped through on their own, but that's obviously where she went. And so he boosts Trip up, right? Trip wants to chase her. Mm -hmm. And Trip gets out the window. And as Pitt goes to leave the bathroom, one of the actual uh, reptoids comes in, one of the snake men. Uh, and he has to fight him hand to hand, which is pretty, it's a pretty solid part, actually. I like that. Yeah. And Pitt gets kind of messed up a little bit. Yeah. His arm gets up, bitten. Yeah. And it gets cut, like, yeah, gashed pretty bad. Um, and obviously the reptoid found it also because he was tracking the backpack still right. as well. Um, and it's like shortly after that though, right? Franks comes in. Franks comes, comes into, into the, the bathroom, yeah. That's right. Franks comes into the bathroom because Franks was also tracking the package. Uh, because he most likely, it, did they mention that? That he probably got one of the cultists' phones as well? Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's what Pitt thinks. Yeah. Franks doesn't say. Um, obviously. And is it at this part where Frank says they need to talk to Pitt? Is yeah. it this part? Okay. Because he basically yeah. like kidnaps him, right? Yeah, pretty much. Him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's pretty funny. Brings him in, not for questioning, it's like for a different reason. Yeah. And on their drive over to the whatever the MCV is using as their headquarters at the time, uh, or is it the actual headquarters? I think it is the headquarters of like that region because they're okay, not they're yeah. in Atlanta. They're not in DC. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um, so, but on the drive over, Pitt asks Frank some questions and Frank's kind of lets slip that they captured Stricken, that they did catch him. Right. Yeah. Cause and, Frank's wants to kill him. Yeah. And he's very upset that he wasn't able to kill him during the, during the operation. Um, Oh, and then what? They get there. Yeah, they get there, and Heather is there. That's Earl's right. Werewolf wife. Yeah, because Beth is there, the the new leader of, of Unicorn. Uh, Unicorn. Yeah. And they kind of explain to Pitt. Well, and we meet the weird uh, puff adjuster. Oh, what's his name? Um. Oh, why can't I think of it? It's a cool name too. <sighs> it is a cool name. But in, anyway, you, you think I'll, I'll talk. Okay, so go ahead. So they lay it out for Pitt that they Stricken wants to talk to one of the Chosen because they're giving Stricken a deal. And part of the deal is that before, he si before he'll sign it, he has to speak to one of the Chosen. And they don't trust Heather to speak with him because Heather will kill him. And they don't trust Franks to speak with him because Franks will kill him. So... Pitt is the only one that they trust to speak to him. And like while this this new puff adjuster like comes up to Pitt and touches him and like heals his arm, but in like a like a kind of like a brutal way, like it looks like it was just cauterized with like a like a steel poker. It, it, it does it wasn't healed like one of the orcs would have healed him. Which I thought was interesting. I really want to know more about the puff adjuster guy. It, I like I feel like he was a really cool character. Yeah, I thought, and I thought that was really cool. Like, like we get a lot of little hints and details about him, but we get nothing like solid about him. No. Oh, so uh, yeah, they have to wait till the contract is finished before Pitt can go in there, and they kind of like line out. Like, I mean, they don't even really. They just kind of like sit around and talk a little bit about that, like something big is coming up, and it might not necessarily be a SOG. So yeah, and like, basically, Stricken has like this, like Stricken needs to speak with the Chosen, but he, like, the Puff Adjuster has written up the paperwork, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but he doesn't really tell Pitt what's in any of it. No. But basically, it's like Stricken needs to make a deal with one of the Chosen. It has to be a Chosen. Yeah. Um. And uh, keep talking. I'm still trying to find the guy's name, so keep talking. <laughs> oh, okay, that's okay. So Pitt, Pitt pretty much goes in there, and he's like on the the back side of two way glass, so they can see him sitting in there with Stricken, and Stricken's actually in in chains. 
And Stricken kind of like lines out that he has a plan to save the world, but in order for that plan to work, he needs that ward stone and he makes Pitt promise to look into it, which is kind of important. So, I mean, like Stricken is really coy and like kind of a douche as he always is. And he like goes and him, him and Pitt talk for a while back and forth that like, Esog isn't necessarily the only threat that's coming. There's something else that's coming that is that that might be even nastier than Esog. And yeah, as, which I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the way they say that because you know we were. I feel like it makes sense for like in the end, books. Though. Well, kind of, yeah, but we were building a saga up for like four books to be like the baddest of bads. But I kind of okay. That was a huge letdown. So. I take that as Pitt misinterpreting his destiny. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Uh, like yeah, he kind thought of. it was going to be a sog, but but just because a sog is there means it's like the beginning of of the thing that that Pitt has to do. It doesn't necessarily mean a sog is the end for him. Okay. Because whatever right. that, whatever else is going on in Brazil sounds way crazier than a sock. Um, just to mention it right now before I forget, I did like that kind of callback to the original book. That, I mean, technically that is like what, you know, it was an old one that um, Lord Machado was dealing with, and I did like that they mentioned this thing has been in South America this whole time like buried deep underground. I was like, oh shit, I forgot about that, that that's what that was. <laughs> I guess we should mention too that Stricken talks about like the the reason he the way he the reason he is the way he is is because he gave up his humanity to save humanity at one time. He didn't go into like exactly the details of it, but right. the reason the reason he looks the way he is is because of something that he he did in his past. Like he gave up part of himself to save humanity which right. could be total bullshit everybody knows stricken is full of shit yeah we yeah i mean we don't really even get too much well right up until the very end which we'll talk about that but we don't really get a whole lot of character building on stricken in this book either no he's actually not very much of it but like as stricken's going to sign the contract he flips everybody off and he goes actually i was just waiting for my associate to show up and uh, basically like a, a succubus shows up so she's super hot with her wings and stuff and she grabs stricken and she just disappears yeah lana well yeah <laughs> i wasn't gonna say her name yet i know but i i just i like her name so i figured I'd she's, mention it. <laughs> she's actually a good character yeah yeah obviously um, the mcb lose their shit when this happens yeah because obviously strict you know getting stricken was like their number one thing they needed to do <clears throat> and franks wanted to kill him um i love that too when they're having when they're talking with the the new head of the mcb which oh i can't even think of his Radaba. name off the top of no radaba's the guy that dies uh Qua quado yeah that sounds right he is a good character i liked him in this uh um, yeah he's good seen... in alpha i'm not alpha uh nemesis too yeah yeah, I liked Quato in this one though. Um, I just like how he he says what the mission was called, and and Pitt's like, "Huh, that's the best you guys could come up with." He's like, "Well, we could have called it Operation Kill Stricken, like Agent Franks wanted." <laughs> yeah. Um. God, why can I not think of the Puff Adjuster's name? Now it's bothering me so bad. I don't know. We I feel can like, just call him the Puff Adjuster. I feel like it's something that starts with a C. I don't know. I don't remember. He doesn't actually show up very many times. No, it's just that this part. And again, we get a lot of like uh, playing like the pronoun kind of game. Like they say like, oh, he's been around for a long time. And so you're like, oh, well, how long has he been around? But yeah, we don't really get any true information about it. Oh, I, I, I skipped a really important part with Stricken on accident. So Stricken mentions that whoever stole the Wardstone, it was under contract, it was protected. And since Stricken didn't receive the Wardstone, something is going to hunt them down. And this something is called a Drekavats, and it is, he, he, he says it's relentless, like it will never stop. 
It's the insurance policy. It's yeah, it's the insurance policy exactly. I I like that he mentions too that if if um uh what's her face? What is the girl's name? Why oh, can't I God. think of her name either? Um if she had let the transition happen and stricken had been given the ward and then she stole it, no big deal. But the fact that she stole it before it made it to stricken's hands, that's why the insurance policy kicked in. Mm -hmm. um, which I did like that. I thought that was a good bit of writing. So like in all um, the chaos, while well, all the MCB agents are looking for stricken and trying to figure out like where he went, Pitt just kind of sneaks out because he doesn't want to be hassled by all of them forever so right he just sneaks out and he leaves his gear behind and like as he's leaving the pub adjuster just appears like right in front of him he's just standing there yeah like in the road though right well he's is in the parking like, garage he, that's what it is yeah like as he's driving off though no he, he doesn't quite leave yet he's, oh, okay. he's like going walking out right and he's just standing there and he's like, do you intend to keep your contract with Mr. Stricken? And he like flips through his notebook, which is a complete transcript of the conversation he had with Stricken. It's all said, handwritten too. Yeah. And he's like, he's, you said when he said, uh, I need that ward stone. Will you look into it for me? And he said, I'll look into it. This is a binding contract. Do you intend to keep it? Yeah. I love that. Me too. I, I really like that. And Pitt's like, yeah, okay. I, I'll, I'll, I'll look into it, he says again, and then the guy proceeds to open up his briefcase and give him back all of his stuff, which he left on the table as he snuck out. Right. Yeah, so he's like, what the hell? How did this guy have all of it? <laughs> and then Pitt, um, Pitt leaves, and he like immediately calls Harbinger, right? Yeah. Yeah, to tell him that... Um, well, doesn't... Doesn't... Um, Heather call Harbinger before they go into the meeting because she's like, he's going to be pissed. Oh, you, they call it. Yeah, you're right. I forgot about that part. Yeah, I they thought, yeah. They call Harbinger. What, what are they trying to get Harbinger to do, though? Um, I can't remember because they don't necessarily. Well, Harbinger is supposedly is a chosen one also. Him and Heather um, are together. Yeah. Um. I can't remember. I don't remember honestly exactly why they needed her to call Harbinger. Were they just trying to get Harbinger to work with the government on this one? And that could be, yeah. Because the puppet adjuster mentions that like there is like a huge event coming, not an extinction level event, but a huge event mm -hmm. that they know about for some reason. And I don't know why they're so coy about it. Why don't they just tell them? Yeah, no shit, huh? Because, you know, if you needed help, then you might as well ask. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they basically, they, they threaten Harbinger. They're like, we'll shut MHI down. And it, like, loses, he loses his mind. And yeah. it's like, who the fuck do you think you are? If you shut us down, so many people are going to die. You don't have that kind of power. Suck my balls. I'm hanging up. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then Pitt ends up, after he goes back, right, then he has to basically go find this girl, right, that has the well, ward again. Harbinger, they explain to Harbinger, like, what she was able to do, and he's like, I know somebody who had similar powers to that. And so he calls someone, Yeah. and he talks to her for a little bit, and they figure out it was, because she's a yokai, and mm -hmm. Her, part yokai yeah no well the person he called is a yokai oh yeah yeah yes yeah yeah sorry i thought you were talking about uh, no i'm not talking face. about her quite yet but you're but you are correct she is part yokai but he calls her and she's like i think your daughter might be up to no good is she, do you think she's around uh, atlanta and then they like kind of like boil it down like yeah she she probably is and they give they give her give pit a tip about like the music scene that she's into around there Mm -hmm. which i love i love this bar scene oh yeah 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 this is super good so Pitt goes to this bar and it's a super like backwoods out of the way uh pretty shitty establishment basically um and i like what i like the uh that the bouncer is like this huge dude gigantic guy uh because he's way bigger than Pitt. 
And he's like, we gave each other that look that tough guys give other tough guys. <laughs> well, what does he say? He's funny. like, he looked me up and down and could tell I wasn't, I wasn't uh, like blackout drunk or high. Yeah. Or yeah. Or strung out on drugs or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then he just like gives him like the little nod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, you're, you're okay. Yeah. Um, but so Pitt ends up having to go into this bar and try kind of without like, because he doesn't know what this girl looks like because right. she can change her face so often. Um, so he actually has no idea what she looks like. And he doesn't want to just go around asking like, hey, have you seen this young girl in here? Because <laughs> he knows that's a pretty surefire way to get kicked out. But he um, does see Guterres at the bar too. That's right. Yeah, so Guterres is He kind of thinks there. he's on the right path. Right. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know, Guterres shows up in Siege? Nemesis. Is it Siege? Nemesis. That's right. And he's one of the, uh, like, the Catholic hunters? Is that right? Yeah, he's part of St. Hubert's Order. That's right, yeah. Yeah, he's a combat exorcist, actually. Yeah, we find that out a little bit later, that that's his exact title. But we might have found that out in Nemesis. I can't remember. Uh, actually, they don't. They don't bring it. They don't. They don't talk about it. In Nemesis. Oh, they do say uh, combat exorcist, which is like the coolest title ever. Yeah, it's super awesome. <laughs> um, and so Pitt thinks he's on the right track. So then, uh, this girl comes out that he thinks might be who he's looking for, and she starts singing, and she can like change her voice like crazy. Like she can sing soft she can sing like hardcore deep metal um which props so, to oliver wyman for doing that like, oh the, yeah the screamo parts oh yeah like, crazy good yeah because i know he has a hard time with those deep voices he did great oh yeah i thought it was so well done um so pitt's pretty sure that this is who he was after um and uh <clears throat> so she's also singing though like, if you catch the lyrics, which, I mean, we as the listener obviously would, but Pitt notices that the way she's singing, she's also staring at Guterres, and she's talking about basically the amount of money somebody's offering her isn't enough, and now... Uh, oh, the exact line is so good. It's like, I didn't know it was going to be this much trouble. You have to pay me double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is pretty good. So Pitt kind of catches on to this, and he realizes that the... Basically, the uh, the Catholics essentially wanted uh, her to steal this, the ward, so they can buy it. Um, does Pitt talk to Guterres before the... Uh, no, not before the dogs show up. The dogs. Is that the first... Mm -hmm. Well, the dude, the, the big bad kicks in the door, right? Yeah, he does come in. Yeah, but the dogs are essentially what fights with everybody first um the dracovats right that's what's called yeah he has a name but i don't remember what it is we actually don't know um, yet. no not yet uh silas that's what ah, it is, that's though. right um but yeah so this dude what comes in the door well i say a dude because he looks like a dude but the door flies open to the bar and Pitt mentions it gets super cold in there. So right. immediately he's thinking like vampire. But there's like fog everywhere too, like super thick fog after this guy kicks the door open. And basically this guy has two dogs with him and the dogs start running across the bar towards uh, the girl on stage. Um and doesn't one of the bikers like punches the dog or hits yeah. one of the dogs, which then the dog immediately turns and attacks the guy, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> See, I love that like hound master aesthetic that he has. Yeah. Very like, he cool. has like a whole menagerie of pets. Yeah. I love that for like a bad guy. It's so yeah. cool that he has like a stable cool. of loyal beasts. Right. Uh, her name is Sonia, by the way. Oh, you're killing it. Yes. Yeah. That's right. So, uh, yeah. So the dogs start going after Sonia. So now Pitt is obviously like, oh, shit, this must be the thing that Stricken was talking about that's supposed to be here to get the ward. Um, and P 
Pitt immediately like pulls his gun, but then he's like, "Oh, I can't really do a whole lot because there's, well, there's a ton a of people in here." Crowd, yeah. And yeah. the bouncer disappeared. Oh yeah, the bouncer as soon as he saw this guy immediately ran like to the back of the bar, <laughs> which was funny. But it comes back up here shortly. Um, and uh, I can't remember what they do to fight this guy at the at first. Cause, well, Pitt, they mostly end up fighting the dogs, right? Yeah, this they, part. they kill the couple dogs, but they, they like disappear into the fog. Like their corpses fall and they kind of like dissipate and then they just reform. Yeah, they reform usually somewhere near the Drakovats. They come yeah. back up like out of the floor. And I, I think then Pitt they actually basically... talks to the Drakovats before he blasts him. Yeah. He, oh, yeah, he probably does. I can't fully remember now, though. Um, and uh, basically, though, right? They cause I can't remember how they fight the Dracovats, though, at this part. They fight with him, right? It, yeah, they do. Well, Pitt talks to the Dracovats a little bit, and he's like, Hunter, you are in my way. I'm just trying to complete my contract. And he's like, well, I can't let you have her because I want what she has, too. And he's like, well, well, then we have to fight then. And they like fight a little bit, Pitt blasts him in the head, and he actually disappears. But then he reforms and he's a little bit bigger. And this time he draws like a, a sweet sword that he yeah. pulls out and just starts like cutting people in half. Mm -hmm. That's but right. Yeah. He just starts like murdering people in the bar and Sonya, they're in his way. Sonia dips at one point. She just she, like while the Dracobots shows up, she dips. And he like he reforms and he kind of leaves Pitt alone and leaves too. Oh yeah. Yeah. His it's very clear from the beginning that his fight is not with anybody. Like he doesn't really want to fight anyone. Right. He just wants to complete his contract, which was to get the Wardstone back. So yeah, um, he leaves and then Pitt tries to follow into like his pickup. And he can kind of tell where the Drekobots is going because all the traffic is swerving out of the way with whatever he's riding. Yeah, he's basically riding like fucking hell horse yeah <laughs> but it has no legs yeah <laughs> it's just like floating mist which i thought was pretty bad it's like i picture it's like a horse in the shape of a motorcycle yeah um <laughs> that just floats above the ground on this mist which is awesome and yeah and it, I, it's like shooting at like blue flames as it's going and it's hauling ass yeah and uh that's right i forgot they get the that's why the Dracovats leaves the the bar is to chase her. Um, and uh, Pitt ends up. Is this when he ends up talking to Guterres? Yeah, it is. A, because a, he, a little bit about the Drekovats. Yeah, because he ends up fighting with the Drekovats and he kills it again and it just shows back up. Like it come, it reforms like out of the fog, and so Pitt's like, "Oh man!" And I did kind of like this in a way that it dies to the silver, but we don't know what it's you know true, like truly what's going on with it yet. Um, and so all Pitt sees is something that it looks like it dies, and then it just comes right back to life. So he's like, "Uh, shit!" Like, <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's not immortal though. No, we yeah, we'll find out about, about that later. Um, but when he ends up talking to Guterres, Guterres explains, he's like, you have to remove its head, but it has to be like a clean cut to kill it, like to get it to stop. Yeah. Um, and basically Guterres ends up doing this at this point, right? Well, they run um, through the woods. He, he catches back up to Sonia. I'm pretty sure he kills the Dragovats while it's on this demon horse and it goes away. He has enough time to catch up to Sonia. He talks to her a little bit about, like, you have to stick with me. We, we have to, like, get through this together. That thing's never going to stop following you. And, and I, love that, I love that they're in the woods running away, and, like, they see a hawk flying around. And Pitt shoots it out of the sky, but it's too late. It doesn't matter because it's, like, telepathic with the Drekovats. So it knows right where they are, and immediately they hear the dogs start barking. That's right. Yeah, the the... Drakovats is using the hawk to like look for them, which is so cool. But and Guterres got ran off the road because he got shot by the blunderbuss that the the Drakovats uses, which shoots lightning, which is right. so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he I think he stole a car and then he got shot off the road. 
And, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah, and Sonya thinks he's dead. But yeah, they run, they run through, they get to a gas station, and he he's like, call for help. And like he goes outside, and Guterres is there again. And that's when he explains that we have to cut off the head. And they they do, they cut off his head, he puts it in a cooler. Mm-hmm. But he also explains that in order to kill him fully, you have to kill him 13 times before the cock crows, which is 13 times in one night. Every time you kill him, he comes back a lot stronger. And like they don't know the final forms of this one because nobody's ever gotten that far with him. But like the, the final forms are supposed to be some of the most deadly things that exist. Right. Um, yeah, so like cutting severing his head clean off, all that did is stop him from coming back that night. Yeah, That's essentially all buying them like 12 hours. Yeah, because he's gonna come back uh the next night at like seven o'clock at night or something like that when the sun sets yeah exactly um so now pit kind of knows what they're up against essentially um and then right they go back to the gas station and sonia had stolen the lady's car and punctured the tires on the car that guterres was driving (laughs) yeah basically she so we should mention too that while she was at the the gas station the lady mentions that uh Sonia talked to somebody on the phone um we don't we're not privy to that yet like who it was but basically that's when she took off and we find out later that's because she now has a better offer than the one that uh the uh, catholics were going to give her well and it it was strange because somebody called her yeah on a landline yeah (laughs) so they had to know exactly where she was yeah, because we should mention their cell phones don't work around the. Oh uh, yeah, he jammed the Dracovats, which is so yeah. cool. Yeah, that is really cool. I like that he has like a, a basically like a frost aura, and he jams electronics around him. It's it's I, he's I pretty badass. He's such a badass bad guy. Yeah, I think like, so too. I, oh, I'm I'm kind of disappointed that he won't be coming back, but. Right. I feel like he kind of <laughs> had an honorable fight. Oh yeah, I mean it's. Let's be real. It's most of this book. <laughs> it, it is most <laughs> Which of this is book, cool. and that's uh, yeah. That's, that's yeah. <laughs> um, but so, do, doesn't oh, never mind. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. So doesn't Pitt like gets back in contact with Earl, right? And they like have a tip that there's a monster in the area that's like trying to collect information about the Wardstone, and they they kind of know where this might be, but they're not kind of they're not sure what kind of monster it is. That's uh I'm drawing a blank here. Keep going. But it, but that's right, right? Like uh, that's kind of correct. I think but, so, yeah. Yeah, so they they go to like this old run down farmhouse and when they get there, Earl cuz he's a werewolf can hear that Sonia is talking to somebody and they Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I I was forgetting the transition of how they got there, but yeah, you're exactly right because they think um, whoever called her is at this location that they now went right. to, right? Yeah, Cause, yeah, because some 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 monster was looking for information about the Wardstone, right? And Sonia shows up and she's talking to whatever this thing is, and she's like, "What do you mean you don't have any money?" And he's like, "I'm I don't I'm not interested in such things. Who told you that? Why would you right. even come here?" And it's I mean I I think they kind of spook him. And it's revealed pretty quickly that this is a lich as he raises a bunch of dead bodies in mere seconds around them. Yeah. And he has like some crazy freaking power. Like he can fly, like he starts floating up in the air. Mm-hmm. And he, gr- I love that he floats and then he also grabs Sonia invisibly and she starts to rise into the air too. Mm-hmm. That shit is so cool. Well, dude, he like blasts the ground apart. Yeah. Uh, and Harbinger is pissed because he knows exactly who this guy is. Um, yeah. Because with a lich, uh, apparently you have to like kill them and destroy them as well as their phylactery. Otherwise, uh, I'm sure you knew that already. Yeah, but they otherwise they can just basically rematerialize once somebody comes in contact with their phylactery and they can possess that person's body. Mm-hmm. Um, so Earl, basically after after the fight is over but he kind of mentions that he knows who this lich is and we yeah, find out afterwards several times 
Yeah, we found out afterwards that like all the way back to like Bubba Shackelford, they've been yeah. killing this particular lich. But yeah, they um, have a they have a little fight. The the reptoids show up too. Cause I, they... I do have to mention too, I just I love this image that Earl transforms and basically uh Pitt thinks that the Lich is gonna kill Sonya too early, so he like distracts him. And I love that Earl's arm just comes through the wall and just pulls the lich through yeah, the barn wall. Just like, <laughs> just, outside. Yeah. Oh dude, just so badass. <laughs> yeah, Earl and him fight for a little a while one on one, and then Earl kind of gets his ass kicked. Yeah, Earl surprisingly gets his ass kicked. Not like gets his ass kicked, but it it uses up a lot of his energy to try to fight this guy who's essentially immortal. So it's pretty hard on him. Yeah, but then they just uh, um, blow him up with a rocket launcher, right? Yeah, they end up just uh, yeah, because it's the new guy, right? Um, oh, it's the guy from the first freaking book, Greg Gregorius. Uh, I think it's Boone. He's on Boone's team, right? Oh, but yeah, Gregorius, you're right. It is Gregorius. You're right. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, Gregorius blows him up, which is freaking sweet. Um, but yeah, Gregorius is from the first book. I forgot about that until they, they mentioned his name. I, th- I think but, he's in Pitt's, like, uh, first, like, the whole... He was in the class that Pitt was in when he got into Monster Hunter International, right? No, I think Gregorius, and correct me if I'm wrong, when they go to do... The Soya Cavern, and I actually think that was a mistake on Korea's part in the writing of this because he says Pitt mentions that they hired Gregorius. Um, God, he mentions a when they hired him, but it's at the Soya Caverns. Gregorius is one of the dudes who's at the who's the military oh, guys. That's, that's right, there. and him and Boone are like bros. Yeah, 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 because they knew each other from back like when they were were in the military. military. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, There is a mistake, though, in the book, I'm pretty sure, because Pitt says, oh, Gregorius, you know, got hired on after he doesn't stay to Soya Caverns. And I I was like, this is the siege. I think so. too. It's something like it's definitely not correct, because I was like, no, 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 I'm pretty sure Gregorius was from right before the Soya Caverns, like when they fight the vampires. Oh, so I'm glad you caught that. I did not. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just a tangent, but you know, being a fan of the series, I pick up on mistakes like that. So, oh, and we should mention that Sonia tries to use the ward to kill the lich, but it embeds it like embeds itself in her hand, and she can't get it out. Yeah, yeah, like welds itself to her palm. Yeah, it's it's like a part of her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they kill the lich. Burn all his body parts in separate fires so he can't reform. And then Pitt kind of gives them the lowdown, right, on like what they have to do. Cause so like they like break down like how much money a Drekaboss would be worth. Cause it's like a once it's like a one time monster, if that makes sense. Like there would be you couldn't like look it up in the book of like how much this thing would be worth. Cause they're like determined on their like deadliness, which a Drekaboss is like unheard of right it's not a very common monster killing them is insanely rare and they like think also, about how much money oh go ahead th- this is just a side note but there's 13 dracovatses right yeah because silas it's, mentions supposed to be 13 rings of hell too okay yeah because it gets mentioned several times they talk about once they kill him they say satan will be down to 12 yeah they also say because when Pitt first addresses him, he says the Drakovats, I presume, and he's like a mere title or something like that. Yeah. And Stricken mentions he doesn't know which one is going to yeah. fulfill the contract. So, yeah, the Silas, the one that we get, yeah, is just one of thirteen of these type of beings that yeah, they know. Which of. makes me wonder what the other ones are like. If they all yeah. have like really unique abilities. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be pretty badass. <laughs> it would be. I doubt we're going to see it, but it's a cool monster. Yeah, for sure. But they basically break down to Sonya that we're taking you with us because we want that wardstone. We will kill this Drekobots. We'll or try to. We're going to try to kill this Drekobots tomorrow night, but we want to go back to Alabama first. Like that's that's where our base is, and that's where we can fight him the best. So you're coming with us, 
mm-hmm. and you are not leaving. I mean, she wants a cut, and Earl's like, absolutely not. <laughs> no. Yeah. <clears throat> um. And then they head back to Alabama, right? Mm-hmm. Um. Does anything happen between then and when the Drakovats really comes back? I mean, this is where we get a little bit of her backstory stuff, right? And yeah, Pitt, and he hangs out with Julie and his son. Yeah. Ray. And then we get a bit of her backstory, right, when Pitt runs into her in the archives. Right? Because he's, like, looking for information about the puff adjuster. Yeah, and he – that's right, because he's, he's looking for a few specific books, and one of the books was going to be one of the memoirs. Um, but it's missing, and he ends up running into Sonia, and she has that memoir book that he's looking for. And this is where we find out that um, she is what's his face's daughter. Oh God, what was his name? Hang on. <sighs> Why can't I think of it? Gardenier. Yeah, I think that's his name. Gardenier. Chad Gardenier. Of course, his name's Chad. Yeah, he is a real Chad. <laughs> yeah, he is the Chad of Chads. He's also a weeaboo. Yeah, <laughs> they literally, yeah. he literally like that is one thing Pitt says about him. I know, and w- is that Larry Korea taking a stab at the guy that he wrote the books with? I think so. like I, that's honestly what it felt like to me. It, it really it, is. It kind of felt like like a, like a and there's a little bit later that about which about the other thing which does does happen tonight if you want to talk about the rats. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I said you. Oh. I, I'm I not feel gonna like lie. I've been doing most of the talking. Sorry. Oh no, it's all good. Um, I didn't fully understand the part where he meets with the rats again. Oh, you don't remember that part from I, the from the files? That, I remember. That's, in my it. opinion, it's literally the only good story in files. Okay, that's what, okay. That's where it came from. Yes. I knew he had met with the rats before, obviously, but I could not remember where it was from. But okay, that makes sense. Um. But basically, right, he meets with the rats just to say that at some point he's probably going to ask them for help, right? Yeah. During the night. Um, but we should talk about the rats because I actually think they're really cool. Oh, yeah. I Okay, go ahead. So, like, he goes to meet with the rats. He brings them a little bit of food. And they they come out. What They're called – uh oh, man, what is the lead rat's name? Something legion. So they basically are, like, Roman rats who were a science experiment. This is a, another story from Files. So if you've listened to all these books and you're like, what the hell, where did the rats come from? It's one of the things from Files. In my opinion, the only good story in there. The janitor like met them and they got him out of a jam. But he, Pitt, Pitt meets with them and they like come out in like four by, no, it's, it's four deep, five across, in, like perfect step-by-step pattern. And they all have like exacto knives and shields and they all like yeah. come up and then they 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 talk to pit on a phone but it's really really fast like they're they're really good at it and he essentially exchanged food with them and they yeah they, he like he's like i might need your help please stay out of sight and they're like we'll fight for you and we're like you guys are tiny this thing's gonna be crazy we don't want all of you to die yeah i do love that they like uh they type on the phone like that's that's basically how they talk is they type out a text message on the phone and then they hand it to Pitt and then he reads it yeah. and then he types one back and then he hands it back to them. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that they're like super formal and they, cause, cause he had to meet with the, the emperor essentially. And mm-hmm. it had to be like a whole pompom circumstance. They play like marching music on a phone too, as they're coming mm-hmm. up. Like yeah, I love hilarious. that. <laughs> I think it's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to dwell on the rats forever, but I like that. No, it's great. I, I think, thought Larry, it, I think the funny too. thing is, it's not even a Larry Korea story, and he does a better job with it than the other yeah. guy who wrote it. <laughs> um, that's right. Um, and then, I mean, what else happens during Frank the night shows before up. Frank shows up? Okay, that's right. And um, Guterres and his. Uh, his like hired muscle are there too. Oh yeah, which is what three other guys? Is mm-hmm. that right? Yeah, so I think it's like three other guys, and they are not part of the Catholic Church, right? Because yeah. 
towards the end of the night, Pitt's like, if these guys survive, I'm going to give them a job offer because they're pretty badass. Um, and then uh, Guterres mentions that he can give some sort of right, essentially, right? That He already did. He already did. Okay. This is against the Drakovats, though, right? It, like, mm-hmm. binds the Drakovats in some way. Well, it, it binds him so they don't necessarily have to kill him 13 times tonight. As long as they kill him 13 times, he will go away. Right. But uh, that's very quickly, like, brushed aside by the Drakovats, so <laughs> – which I did like. I mean, the, k- yeah, kind of, because it does kind of um, matter in the end, I think. Yeah, I think kind of, but doesn't he say that he's like, I definitely know that I – not now, but later on. He's like, I can definitely break this thing that the the Catholics have done to me. Well, I th- I think that has to do with his contract that he has with Satan or whoever. Oh, yeah. Because I don't think you can ever truly kill him is what the vibe I was getting. That's if what you, I was getting you too, kill him yeah. 13 times, like he may be gone for a while. Like, like maybe the thing he was pursuing that time he can't finish, but he he could come back again. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. Um, but and they do also they get the place like warded up by the elves. So unless he breaks the barrier from the outside, he can't reform within it. That's right. Yeah, because otherwise, like they kind of learn that basically he can reform. The fog is like where he can reform. So if they can keep the fog outside of the compound, he can only reform outside the compound. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah, they he shows up, you know, and he he tells the hunters, he's like, I'm not here to fight you guys. Just give me the wardstone. This will be over. Julie shoots him in the head. He comes back again. They kill him again, pretty easy. And then like the third time, I just like this because he he's a they they send Skippy after him. In his helicopter, Skippy's the helicopter pilot. He's an orc. But they, right. they send Skippy after <laughs> him, and they, you hear him shooting, but then Skippy can't keep up with him because he's going so fast on this demon horse that he just right. breaks through the gate. Yeah, he gets through the I gate think in like that his is third form. so cool. Yeah, that's freaking badass. And like um, as soon as he breaks through, immediately like he lets the hawks loose, and they just start knocking people off the buildings. Yeah, and as soon as he's obviously they end up they kill him pretty quickly though, right? Once he's inside because freaking uh Milo has like the turrets all set up for him when he from yeah. where he came in. Yeah, so they like light him up with all these turrets and kill him pretty quickly. And they're like kind of counting to themselves how many times they've killed him and I can't remember what it's at, like 6 or 7. Is that when he's big enough to pick up the car? Is that when he picks up the car? I think it's eight. Is it eight? When, yeah. When he's like 10 feet tall. Yeah. I love that, though, that he picks up the car and he just freaking hurls it where they all are. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, because he knows where the orders are coming from, which is so cool. Yeah. He also, at one point, his blunderbuss is so big that he just completely annihilates like one of the turrets and like half of the building yeah. because it's so big. Yeah, um, I think it's later when he's like on his ninth or tenth, he cuts the building in half with his sword. It's so big. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of find his last form to be a bit of a letdown. I don't know how you feel about that. I was I was gonna mention that. So obviously they have a very heated fight with him. It's it's really cool. Like I mean, we're not doing it justice. It well, is no, a I really mean, cool listen fight. To the book. Um, but when they get to his, so they assume they kill his twelfth form, which is gigantic like it is huge and they they basically are hitting him like franks is holding a 20 millimeter cannon in one hand just continuously oh, yeah. blasting him to kill him which and he's is, just walking through which it. is crazy if you think about yeah. it because that's that's like a that's that's a tank gun that right he's just holding <laughs> it's hilarious <laughs> it is hilarious um but the drekovats is just walking through that yeah he's just like, um walking in stride yeah. They also realized at one point too that the fog is all part of him. Yeah. So they like Milo had rigged up the sprinkler system to be filled with gasoline and they basically light most of the compound on fire to burn the fog away, which I thought was kind of funny. 
Um, but essentially, they kill his 12th form. And when he comes back in his 13th form, because I was like, oh, man, he's going to be even bigger. But I did like the twist that Larry put on this, that essentially the mass and everything he accumulated through the first 12 forms now spreads back out into all basically his first form and there's literally like a thousand of them yeah so he essentially goes from being a one-man army to being an actual army (laughs) yeah which is kind of cool i don't i don't i just i don't know i don't know what i was expecting i was like oh that's what happens it's not what i was expecting but actually it was I think it was okay. Like I thought it was an okay little like change in my opinion that he went from being like a giant to like a bunch of small ones. And I like that all of them that they even mention that every individual one is pretty much acting on its own. Yeah, they like they have like their own intelligence. Right. They're not just like it's not all one intelligence like they don't all run here or they don't all run here like some of them go straight for the door some of them start to flank around to the side like they all know what they're supposed to be doing um and as they kill all of them they notice that they fall into fog and then the fog kind of drifts across the ground and essentially it will drift into another one and it will make that one basically go to the second form Mm -hmm. and so on and so forth Um, And they realize this kind of quick that as they kill them, basically, whichever one is last is going to be probably just as powerful as his 12th form was. And they get overwhelmed actually pretty quickly. Yeah. And I did like that because this this sort of circumvents what I think Larry Korea's books suffer from a little bit. And that's like the hero complex. Um, So I did like that they actually were very much so on their heels and they were losing in this because at, at when this fight starts, I'm like, and of course the Dracovats isn't even going to like get through. Like that's boring. But I did like that, that they were a bit on their heels at one time. Yeah. And they like end up fighting their way down, like well, essentially getting forced down, not really fighting, getting forced out of the basement where Sonia is. Cause that's the most important part is they don't want him to get the ward stone. Right. And that's where Guterres and his boys are. Uh, yeah, they they fight a couple more Drekovatses, and then they they kind of like are forced to lock themselves in there with her because he he has like a massive form, ba- essentially like his ninth form again, but they're fighting him with like ten people in the basement, and so they have to like lock themselves in the bottom of the bunker, but like as they get in there, they realize that there's like a big hole in the back of the bunker, and that Sonia's gone. And she's not in there anymore. Yeah, and it's not just like a whole, like, something smashed through the wall. It's like no. a perfect circle. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a better way to put it. Um, and Pitt mentions, he's like, I've seen this before when Stricken disappeared uh, from the um, from the Monster Control Bureau headquarters. So they think that Stricken and Lana are involved at this point in taking Sonya. Um, and they still don't manage to kill all because they basically realize they have to kill all of the Dracovatsas now in order for him to go away basically and if any single one of them is left alive it counts as him surviving Um, so they're also trying to manage to kill every single one of them Um, yeah this is when Earl well they hear like huge banging on the outside of the door and then like a scuffle happens and then somebody opens it from the outside which would only be able to somebody would know the password and earl comes in and he's pretty beat up and he like looks and he's like the fuck you do to my wall yeah <laughs> I, wish I, I thought that was hilarious <laughs> yeah this shit is funny and then he kind of like orders pit to try and find sonia in like the underground tunnels underneath and Guterres leaves on his own too. He's like, "You're never, you're not gonna be able to get through here. Like, I don't know how you're gonna freaking figure it out." It's like, oh, I'll, I'll manage. I'm fine. I'm Guterres. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is when he asks the rats for help, and they come running and they tell him like exactly where Sonia went and where the succubus went. Yeah, and I like that they're like, we took, we managed to take out one of the invaders or whatever. 
but they were like, well, they now... tell him there was two left, but we killed one of them, which means they killed a badass one. Yeah. And they were like, but his final one is too strong for our death by a thousand cuts. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, man, these rats are so cool. Yeah, they are pretty sweet. So, yeah, they chase her, and, like, as they get there, the, it's like the Drekovats is there, they're there, Lana's there. And Frank shows up, Frank, right? Yeah, Frank shows up, and then Stricken comes out, and he's got, a like, a shotgun in Frank's back. Yeah, and they mentioned that obviously Stricken clearly has some serious like otherworldly powers because nobody heard him coming or saw him yeah. coming, and even Franks didn't notice. And Stricken's like twenty feet behind him, yeah, like really close. So, and then this is where Stricken gives his big long spiel, right? Basically tells everybody kind of what's going on, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um. So basically the Drekovats is like, I don't care what's going on. I just want the ward. He's like, I got to get the ward back. And then uh, Stricken is threatening to kill Franks like once and for all, because he has some like serious, like cyanide rounds in his well, shotgun. Well, he's got some, a Paris, like a, a, a toxin from a jellyfish, which a eats neurotoxin, away that's flesh. Right. Yeah. So it and would, he's it pretty would, sure it would be something Franks couldn't heal around, essentially. Yeah, he's pretty sure if he hits Franks with it even uh, once, like it will do a ton of damage to yeah, him. Yeah, probably like disintegrate him. Um, but basically, Stricken lays out. He's like, I only need one chosen, and he's like, I need you guys to come with me. And this is also when he tells the Drakovats, he's like, Look, you clearly didn't read the fine print of the insurance policy. Because you failed to complete this fast enough. Yeah, you were late by two minutes. Yeah, and so he's like, you, you know, like, basically, you're going to be banished back to hell now, and, you know, it won't matter. But the Drikovats... No, he, he, he's not going to banish him back to hell. He tries to recruit him. He's like, work, you have to work for me now. Oh, that's right. In order to not be banished yeah. back, though, right? Yeah, because otherwise it was just going to pull him, like, back to hell, and he wouldn't get to complete his contract. Um, but yeah, Stricken is like, you have to come work for me, and then, you know, all will be forgiven. Um, but I love that the Drakovats is like, I, you know, he's like, I refuse to do that. And he literally tears up like the contract. Yeah, he rips it up. And as he does that, there's like a flash of light, and Pitt is like, basically finds himself like on the ground, but they're in a completely different area. And he's like, what the hell just happened? And this is where we find out that Stricken had one of like the ropes that the uh, temporary mortal condition was using and teleported them all, everybody within the specific circle, which the Dracovats was not in, uh, to South America. Yeah. For... And, and this is kind of where I expected the book to end, honestly. It probably would have been better if it ended here, in my opinion. Yeah, but basically, um, Strick it. Well, I guess we forgot to mention there was a part where Pitt talks to Guterres, and Guterres tells him why the church wants the ward, and he like sees back into his memories. And there's this horrible thing in Brazil, which it's indescribable, which is perfect because it's a cosmic horror. Right. But it's like essentially like a color that turns people into monsters. Right. And there's like no way to fight it. And they hope that this ward stone will stop it. Yeah, they're hoping it will destroy it. That's why they want the Wardstone so bad. Um, and so it's weird that Stricken brought them to South America because now Which is, Pitt, but that's where this thing was, huh? Yeah, exactly. Um, so then Stricken also mentions that they need to go meet with the Fae, right? Yeah. With a so basically, Fae. he gets this group of people together and they're getting like a bunch of black SUVs and they're gonna drive to where uh, there's like a bunch of fey at this one area uh they get ambushed uh and basically they have like a gunfight in the middle of the streets like in brazil and uh but as they're leaving so pitt mentions that these aren't like regular cultists who are fighting them who ambush them they're like uniformed like officers basically is what mm -hmm. they look like um but 
basically they get in this freaking gunfight goes back and forth bunch and they they escape with stricken the dracovats shows back up but, but we, hang on we should mention that pit recognizes one of the cultists yeah that's what i was just about to say oh okay sorry um but yeah right before the dracovats shows back up Pitt's like looking back as like these guys are chasing them down the road and there's like one guy in the middle of all of them like pointing and yelling clearly giving orders who's clearly the leader and Pitt is like that is obviously Lord Machado that's giving the orders yeah and I'm not which, gonna lie wait a minute I blasted him in the face yeah Pitt that's when Pitt like he's like I re specifically remember what he looks like when I killed him when I shot him in the head yeah, after he was redeemed. I'm not going to lie. I did not like that name drop. So it, we'll it, see where it goes. It kind of, I think it makes, to me, it makes sense because like the old ones, I think, have his soul. Okay. So they could just use him how they want. That could be, yeah. That would make but sense. I think they're just using him to lead this cult. That would make sense, yeah. Because he's he is a great warrior. Sure. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. I'll be curious to see where it goes. Um. But yeah, then the Dracovats shows back up and he his sword is so big that he like slices the top of the car off, right? <laughs> no, he sli I think he slices the car in half. Is that what it is? I just remember it says that where Stricken should have been sitting, the headrest is missing, so it should have like cut his head off, but Stricken is not in the car. See, cuz I think it's up and down just because of the way Franks gets hurt. Yeah, because he gets hit in the arm, right? Yeah, well, maybe yeah. so. Maybe it's like a forty-five degree slash across, yeah, that like makes where Stricken sense. is. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, because it cuts the headrest off of where Stricken was supposed to be, and Stricken is not in the car once they stop. Yeah. Um, and the Drakovats is wounded, right? Because Stricken hit him with the car, also. Yeah, they ran him over. Um, and uh. But I can't yeah, remember. Frank, is this is it where they finish him off? I can't remember now. Well, Frank's is hurt. He's missing his arm and like most of his innards. Yeah, and he's going to be rendered combat ineffective in less than ten minutes, right? Or yeah, something and, like that. And Stricken's like, we have to leave. If you are late to meet the Fae, they will not meet with you. And oh, I yeah, have yeah, to yeah. have a chosen. Who's right. it gonna be? And That's so right. Pitt decides to stay and fight the Dracovats. Gets his ass whooped. But Sonia shows back up. And she has her father's sword that Milo gave to her earlier, and she's able to actually kind of she beats the Drekovats and kills him. She kind of just That's like right. hacks away at him. Yeah, she doesn't really know how to use the sword because I wouldn't know how to use the katana either. He's all he was like pretty weakened too, basically. Well, I, yeah, I get the sense that he used most of his power to get there. Right. Um. That's right. Yeah. So she ends up killing him, and that's when Pitt kind of mentions he's like. He says something about the fact that oh, we won't ever be seeing that guy again. But I think maybe you're right. Like, I don't think that's 100 percent true. Yeah, it's just the vibe that I got that he was like, it does. Maybe now that he ripped up his contract, he can't come back. But oh, I was maybe, yeah. getting the sense that even if they killed him 13 times, he wasn't truly gone. Like maybe he wouldn't be the next Drekovats that gets sent. But I, I get the sense that he just would would never be like fully gone. And that could be, uh, well, and the fact that there's 12 other ones is yeah. just super cool. So uh, we will see if that comes back up in another book. But um, yeah, so then they end up going and meeting with this Fae Queen, right? Or this, mm -hmm. it's a disgraced Fae Queen. Is that right? She's in exile. A exiled Fae Queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but she's like the warrior queen if that makes sense okay um and basically stricken is trying to strike a deal with the fey right so they um, could go on her ground like her grounds they have to go through her grounds yeah to basically get to this thing nobody else knows except stricken stricken he's not really telling anyone else what he is doing or what they are all doing um and this is where one of the chosen came in, right? There has to be a chosen there. Mm -hmm. And Stricken also, we find out that the reason he tried to recruit the Dracovats is because he wanted to give him to the Fae Queen. Well, in order to have audience with her, you have to give her a gift, and she collects right. dangerous monsters. Mm -hmm. um, 
I was really curious how that would have worked if the Drekovats was there, because wouldn't he literally just be like, uh, no, I'm going to fight you guys. I'm going to fight all of you. Well, But the Fae like, are badass. I, but he was pretty badass, so... It, was is, just, a good, it is a good point. I, I don't just know. Wondering, maybe they, maybe yeah. they want... They, maybe that's the thing. It's like, maybe they want to fight these monsters. Oh, maybe. Um, but since he doesn't have the Dracovats, which... Uh, that's what he promised to her. So she was really excited that she was going to have that because she'd be the only one who had one. Um, he pulls out the freaking Lich's phylactery, mm-hmm. the one they killed earlier, which, eh, I wasn't too thrilled about that. But I it, mean, I feel like it makes one hundred percent sense. It Why does would they have because known where the lich was yeah, because Stricken was the one who told, um. Sonya to go there so either way he was going to win because either they would kill the lich or he would get the ward at that yeah. point like he was going to win that part so yes it does make sense that he knew where the phylactery was uh, but he uses that as his gift and then what is I can't remember why it comes up as to he mentioned something about uh, what about being part of the greatest monster hunting family that ever has been right he mentioned something about because they some way companions is that what it is yeah they like need need more people than this to be able to win yeah and she is it right she's not willing to help them unless he has like a good reason for it right is that when he brings up his lineage yeah yeah that's when Pitt brings up that he's part of the shacklebirds but not by blood, but by virtue, by like through what he's done. Right. But then she basically says that's not good enough. It's not going to work. And Stricken says, what about, he's like, no, no, no. I said being part of the greatest, you know, monster hunting family that ever was. And yeah. this is where we find out that Stricken was what? Well, no, they, they, she, okay, hang on. You're getting a little mixed up. She doesn't deny them. She's like, okay, the Shacklebirds can go. That all sounds good. And she's like, you can go, Franks. You can go, Sonia. You can go, Pitt. But because they're chosen, right? We're not allowed to go. Okay, that's right. That That's right. She's denying Stricken yeah. to go across the, that's right. She, because of his gift, she's going to grant the rest of them to go. Yeah but not stricken, right? Yeah, because okay. he's a piece of shit and she knows. Right. But this is when he drops the uh, fact that he was... Yeah, you, you already said that the Shackleford's could go, so I can go too. Yeah. And this is where he mentions that he was Bubba Shackleford's... Brother, I think. Is that what it is? Or like his nephew? It's something yeah. like that. It's like way back in the... Fa- in the yeah. Well, it's way back in the bloodline. Exactly. Um. Yeah, and then the the book ends with Stricken being like, "I've always wanted to go on an adventure." Yeah, and that's it. And I was like, "God damn it, it's over!" Are you kidding me? <laughs> I know. I wanted. To, I want to know what's gonna happen next. I know. I do too. And I feel like that. I think that's why I feel more like this is like a seven point five instead of an eight because I think we just got a huge stepping stone to something better. And all I hope is it's not something like Siege that seemed to have been built up to be like this great finale and was just a big letdown. Yeah, I agree entirely with you. Yeah, I hope, I hope the next book, I hope this improvement in quality continues. I agree, yeah. I think this is much more of a return to form over Siege and Guardian for sure. Um, I mean, this was like, this was the salad, right? Before we get the big final meal. Exactly. And I, that was the only reason. For more Monster Hunter. Exactly. And that that's the only reason that I didn't think it was a true return to form. Because let's, let's face it, it's not like Nemesis level of good. Well, no, none but, of them are. But it is really good. And I think you're exactly right that all it did is make me want more Monster Hunter. Which, Which is a good sign because I was pretty much like, fuck this series. Exactly. I mean, that's essentially why we did our degradation <laughs> yeah. of the crown series. So, or I mean, episode. Yeah, because we were pretty much fed up with the series. So I am glad Guardian to see Guardian is a steaming pile of shit. Yeah, I don't like and I will fight anybody who disagrees with that. 
yeah, email us and let's see what happens. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's, and I think that's great that this, in a way, is a return to form for that reason that it makes me just want more. Because every other book up to Siege pretty much just made me be like, I want more Monster Hunter. Yeah. And then Siege came out and I was like, man. That was pretty lame. And yeah, then Guardian the came out. And I, I was, like, was like, I don't know if I care anymore. Yeah. And then Guardian came out and I was like, man, this isn't what I wanted. Come on. <laughs> so I, I do think this was a nice breath of fresh air in the series for sure. Yeah. It, and it, I am not counting. We don't count files and the memoirs in the series. So no. and neither should you. Yeah, exactly. So what is coming up next on Spooky Month, Ryan? I think we're going to do The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah, a true classic, perhaps. Perhaps. So yeah, look forward to that one. Uh, we greatly appreciate all of you for listening. Uh, the only thing we would ask at this point, if you're still listening, you've made it this far, please you know, like, comment, subscribe, five stars, thumbs up, thumbs down, what, whatever you think we deserve. It yeah, it doesn't have to be five stars. It just has to be a rating. Yeah, just leave us a rating. Uh, drop us an email. We'd love to hear from you guys. So, Yeah, and I, I think with that, we'll catch you guys in the next one.